Welcome to Papa's Workshop. Recently, I did a video on building a dining room table that my son had designed. Well, now it's time to go ahead and build a bench for that table. And I'm using the same basic design for the bench as we did for the dining room table. So it's a little bit of an unusual design and I wanna show you how we built it today. Let's get started. Before we start today's video, I've got a real big favor. Recently, YouTube has changed their algorithms. What does that mean? That means that my videos are not being recommended as often as they used to. How do we change that? I need your help in a most urgent way to be able to like this video, share it with as many people as you can, and subscribe by making these three simple changes it really will trigger those algorithms to be able to get the recommendations back out to everyone in the woodworking community and the CNC world. So if you like the videos that I'm producing, you like my teaching methods, please subscribe, like, and share. Now, let's get back to today's video. Now the foundation for this bench is actually two two by tens that I had glued together for another project. And what I did is went ahead and glued them together and set them aside. And now I had to go back and sand and be able to basically eliminate you from being able to see the joint. And I think that actually looked pretty good for just rough um, construction dimensional type lumber. But the next thing that I did if you'll recall, the dining room table was 90 inches long, and I went ahead and cut this board down to the 90 inches. Now, I want to make this bench a little bit wider than normal. I cut this down to 15 inches, and this is going to be wider than a typical bench, but I think it's going to provide a lot of stability considering how the legs are designed with that 5-degree taper. I took two of the cutoffs to be able to make the actual legs for this. And the first thing that I did is went ahead and cut this down to where I have my five degree angle here and it's gonna taper on both sides. And as the dining room table had done, this is gonna taper five degrees in. And that's gonna work okay because if you extend a straight line from here up, you're actually still getting some support onto the foot of this uh, bench. And the other thing that I am going to do is put a foot on top of this to be able to provide some additional stability. But I'm keeping with the same basic design on being able to have that taper of the five degrees inward and the five degrees tilting inward this way. And the next component that I did is I went ahead and cut this support. Now this is going to run along the entire uh, bench underneath it to be able to provide some stability to the bench itself and also to the legs. Now this support is actually four inches tall and I have the five degree angle cut into that area so that it provides the stability for the leg itself. The overall height of this uh, bench is going to be 17 inches, which is the standard height uh, for chairs and benches. Now here's a look at the bench upside down where you can actually see how it goes together. The only remaining component left to be able to cut is the actual foot that will go right here on top of the um, of that leg. And I'm going to cut that next and get that ready. And then this is going to be assembled using dowel rods and the glue. 
I went to the scrap bin and I just found a couple of pieces of scrap wood that I can actually cut down and use for my uh, feet that will go onto the bottom of the legs. Now I'm gonna make these feet three inches wide and I'm gonna make them 15 inches long. So that will give me enough material to be able to do that with these scraps. With the feet now cut and everything just dry fit sitting on the table, you can get an idea of what this bench is going to look like. The next step is just to be able to go ahead and get everything sanded. And I'm also gonna put a 45 degree chamfer edge on most of the components. And that also is keeping with the design of the original dining room table. Being dimensional lumber, there's a lot of sanding required that you might imagine. So I'm not gonna bore you with just watching me sand all of this wood. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get everything sanded and then I'll be back to show you the next step. While sanding this, I found a, a knot hole here that we need to be able to fill. I'm gonna get some air and blow this out, clean it up, and then we're gonna fill this with the Starbond CA glue. Now today I'm using the medium thick black Starbond glue, and this CA glue works amazingly well. Now they also have a brown available but I'm gonna go ahead and use the black for today's project so that you can see it very clearly in the camera. So after sanding it, you can look at that and see it is perfectly smooth. That is what I'm looking for, that's perfect. So don't forget, in the description, I have a 15% discount that you can purchase the Starbond glue and it is a wonderful product to be able to use. Now this is the bottom side of the bench and it had a number of knot holes that needed to be filled. And I found it was just faster just to actually take the lid off of the CA glue and pour it into the uh, holes, the little knot holes. And that took care of all of them. There was a lot of them. So I'm just gonna wait just a moment for this to dry and then sand it and continue on. Okay, now that all the sanding is done, I set up the 45 degree chamfer bit in my trim rider and I'm going to go ahead and put that edge on the legs, on the support underneath, and of course on the bench top itself. So this just takes just a couple minutes to be able to do this on all of these different parts. But one thing I wanna point out you do need to be able to run on those end grain first, just to help prevent the, the tear out, and then run along the rest of it. Now that it's all done, you can look at the finished result, and it looks just fantastic. I love this edge, and this is the same edge that I had put onto the table itself, so everything matches. And wow, using that trim router with that chamfer bit really stirs up a lot of sawdust. But I think it's well worth it. It's worth a little sawdust to get this edge on there and it looks fantastic. It's finally time to start assembling everything. And for this project, I'm starting with the foot and attaching it to the leg. Now I've clamped it in place so that it is exactly where it needs to be and I'm pre-drilling the holes to be able to accept the lag screw. Of course, I'm gonna blow it out so that there's no sawdust in that hole. Then I'm gonna grab the lag screw and just go ahead and bolt that into position. There's really no need to be able to use the dowel rods in this particular application the lag bolts do a fantastic job holding that foot to the table leg. I have everything laid out now exactly the way it's going to go onto the bench, but I also have taken the time to do my little layout lines to make sure that that uh, points are marked and they're dead center in that leg. 
I'm going to go ahead and pre-drill those and get that mounted to my cross uh, piece, which is that four inch by inch and a half piece of wood. And to do that, my drill bit was not long enough to be able to go all the way through. So I'm going to drill this portion first, and this is going to act as a guide to be able to drill into the next section of it. Now I have that cross member clamped to my workbench. That way it will not move. And then when I take the table leg, I can literally just line it up on the reference points that I have drawn onto the wood and then drill on through. And that creates the guide that I need. And now that I have it partially drilled, I can go ahead and finish to get to the desired depth to be able to accept that dowel rod. Now this is the only way that I know to be able to do that since my drill bit was not long enough. And this does work extremely well, but you do have to be accurate in measuring out everything. Now, with glue onto the dowel rod, it's time to be able to assemble this component. And I'm making sure that I have glue inside the hole too. I don't want it just on the dowel rod. I want to have plenty of glue to be able to hold this in position. I put quite a bit of glue onto the dowel rod itself and then grab the table leg and I'm just going to hold it right up in position and slide it in. Now that it does take the hammer to be able to tap this in, this is a very tight fit. and I want to be able to have this just where it comes through to the other side of this table leg. And then I'll be able to go ahead and just drive it into position and this portion will be done. Now that I have both dowel rods in position and I have it where those just extend just a little bit through to the other side, that makes it where it's going to be able to line really easy now. Put glue on that cross member as well. We want to make sure glue is everywhere. So now it just sits right in position and then I can take the hammer and tap that in place. Now I repeated this process on the other end of my cross member so I have both legs attached and then just to be able to hold it in place to allow the glue to dry I use some pipe clamps to be able to clamp this into position so that it created some very nice tight joints. So this takes just a little bit of planning to be able to do but it's really not that hard. With the glue dried, I was now able to take this one large component and move it right over on top of the bench itself. Now with very careful alignment, I had to be able to pre-drill everything. And again, my drill bits were not long enough, so I did have to measure very carefully. But I was able to get that attached, flip the bench over, and now it's time to put the dowel rods in through the top to be able to hold the end. Now one thing you'll notice is that I'm using clamps to be able to hold the top of this bench to the legs. And the reason I'm doing this is I don't want any movement at all. And I pre-drilled the hole, which is a half inch hole to accept the oak dowel rod. And then with plenty of glue, I just put it in position and I can tap it in with a hammer. Those clamps hold it exactly where it needs to be so that it doesn't move and it makes it where those dowel rods will go in fairly easily. Here's a quick look at the bench, all finished. Now I'm leaving the clamps in right now to be able to hold them in position so there's no movement and allowing that glue to dry. Once the glue dries, then I can remove the clamps and go ahead and cut the ends off of the dowel rods. To be able to cut the top off of these dowel rods, I'm using this saw. I don't have the Japanese style saw to do it. To be able to do this, I am putting down a little thin piece of wood to be able to keep the saw blade right above the surface of the bench. I really don't want to take a chance on digging into the top of the bench. From there, I'll just sand it flush. Now you can see smoke coming out. This is a very, very dull uh, blade. So these are the only two that I'm going to cut right now. It's time to go get another blade. But in the meantime, with these cut, I'm going to go ahead and sand it, 
get these smooth and finished up so it'll look good. Or a sanding. I'm sanding this starting with a 60 grit, 100 grit, and then moving up to the 220. The results of this is fantastic. And it gives a nice decorative touch with the dowel rod showing through into the uh, wood. And it makes for a beautiful finish. I like this. I like this a lot. I do have a couple of nail holes here that I need to fill. And I'm going to show you how to do that next. Now the next day I went ahead and bought a new blade. And it's time to cut these off. And you can see a world of difference. One, it goes very, very quickly, and there's no smoking involved. Much better having a sharp blade. I have shown different ways to be able to use and make the um, putty, and one of the ways is just use the stain itself, and that is a very effective way to be able to take a little bit of the fine sawdust from your sander and mix that in with the stain that you're going to be using. And that makes a perfect wood putty. And we'll go show you how this works. This is a nice consistency. Let me go do this with you. So I've got two nail holes here, one here and one there. And I can just take this material now and just shove it right into that hole and that makes a perfect wood filler that way you don't have to worry about any glue that you may mix with your uh, putty that would cause it where the stain wouldn't accept it that's going to accept just perfect now when we stain it it just blends in perfectly. So that gives you yet another way to be able to stain and be able to make this work. It blends in, you can't even see it. I really like this method for making my wood putty. And if you haven't noticed by now, I really don't like buying the store-bought putty. It just never works out to be the right color and it doesn't accept the stain the same way. So now it's time. I'm just going to go ahead and finish staining the rest of the bench. And these knots that I filled with the Starbond CA glue look just beautiful with the stain on them. So here's a final look at the finished bench. I think it turned out just beautiful and I can't wait to get this moved over into his house and have it sitting at the dining room table. This keeps with the design that he had for the table, and it's going to be a great addition. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.